Morning Taste Buds, I'm Chef Michelle Bernstein, but I'm not cooking this week, but I still am making delicious because I'm making, not cooking, both beef and fish tartars and carpaccios today on SoFlo Taste, and I assure you, it's no raw deal. This is South Florida. It's where I live and work. I'm Chef Michelle Bernstein. South Florida is more than sun, sand, and sea. It's a lifestyle of fashion, sound, culture, and of course, food. Food with taste from all over the world. Join me as we celebrate the food of South Florida and the people who love it. Join me as we experience SoFlo Taste. Taste buds and welcome to Soplo Taste here in the Goya Kitchen at J World in Coconut Creek. But today I don't really need a kitchen since I'm really not cooking because I'm making tartars and carpaccios. So let's get to not cooking. The first one is going to be a beet, not beef, but beet carpaccio. So what I have here are very thinly sliced red beets, very thinly sliced yellow beets. And if you can see, I left the skin on because it's such a beautiful contrast. Very thinly sliced radishes. A bounty, if you will, of beautiful vegetables because now is the season. Instead of giving you just raw beets and putting a vinaigrette on top, I thought how delicious it would be to marinate these beets. So I took apple cider vinegar and olive oil and just a little bit of salt and combined it and marinated each of these things with that. So using a tweezer, I'm going to go ahead and make a carpaccio. So I will make it just a little rustic. If not, it's just going to take us forever, but let us build something very beautiful. So let's allow the traditional red beet to be our outer layer. A beet sometimes can be a little bit of a hard sell. However, if you've never tasted a raw beet, it's a totally different experience. It's beautifully sweet. So here's our outer ring, and then this more inner ring of beet will be this gorgeous golden beet. I put the exact same amount of marinade, but you'll see that the red beet stayed shinier than the golden beet. But I do find this kind of stuff extremely interesting. All right, then in the center, we've got these gorgeous radishes. Let's go ahead and then combine them together and just make a very pretty radish salad in the center. What a beautiful first course. Let's go ahead and top it for good measure with a little bit of ground black pepper. We've got poppy seeds. I love beets and poppy seeds together and I thought this would just be a really great crunch and texture as well as roasted and salted sunflower seeds. Some freshness, you can use mint, you can use basil. I'm using dill right now. And then look at these gorgeous crisps of bread. We basically just cut bread as thin as we could, tossed it with oil, salt and pepper. And these are great little croutons. You can just break them up a little bit like so. And then every bite you take will have a little bit of a crunchy, thin crouton. I think it's a beautiful start to the day. So there you go. Enjoy your first course. And we will come back with beautiful carpaccios and tartars of all different shapes, sizes, and colors. Sofa Home Project is coming up right after the food. Soflo Taste will return right after this. Now back to the Goya Kitchen at JA World and Soflo Taste. Here's Chef Michelle Bernstein. All month long, Publix is celebrating Haitian Heritage Month. So let's check in with Melinda Harper and Chef Ray at the Publix Cooking School for some more good Haitian food. Michelle. We're back at the Publix Cooking School here in Plantation, where Chef Ray's going to make another traditional dish with all of the flavors of Haiti. And since we're on the subject of school, you may want to take some notes so you can try this recipe at home. Welcome, everybody. My name is Chef Ray, and I'm with Publix Aprons Cooking School here in Plantation, celebrating Haitian Heritage Month. Today, we're going to be making a Haitian-style pickled vegetables, also known as piclis, and uh, it is going to be fantastic. Uh, so to get started, what we're going to do 
is we're going to talk a little bit about our uh, scotch bonnet peppers. If you're going to be working with a few of these, you want to make sure that you wear gloves. Uh, but for us here, two of them, you make sure we we'll wash our hands properly and we should be okay. Um, so as you're doing these, you want to make some decisions because the spiciest part of this pepper is actually going to be uh, the little membrane inside of here. So if you want the maximum spiciness, leave the whole pepper, leave everything in there. Um, if you want a little less spiciness, since we're using two, take off the seeds in the membrane off of one and leave the other. If you want it as mild as possible, considering you're still using uh, scotch bonnet peppers, then scoop all that out. What we're going to do now is we're going to get our pickling liquid ready. And we need something acidic, so this is going to be apple cider vinegar. We're also going to do some lime juice, some chopped garlic, some whole black peppercorns, some cloves, and some salt. We're also going to add our peppers. And we want to bring this to just above a simmer. We don't need this to boil, uh, but we do want to get this really, really hot. For our next step, we're going to take our uh, coleslaw mix. Now you can buy a uh, pre-made coleslaw mix, that's fine. You've got some cabbage in here, some carrots. Uh, what we're going to add to this is some shaved white onion, some red peppers, green onion, and some more carrots. These are matchstick carrots. You can cut your own if you'd like, but we already saw our matchstick, so I'm gonna do that. This hot mixture, make sure we swirl it around to make sure that we dissolve any salt. Now, what you, it's very important that you do is you take a plate or some kind of weight and then you put it right on top so that you can completely submerge everything. Okay, so after chilling our veggies for two hours or overnight, uh, I remove the plate from these. And as you can see, uh, they're nice and soft. They look great, they smell amazing. And um, this goes great on just about anything. Uh, for this recipe and more, visit publix.com slash flavors of Haiti. We'll see you next time. Even at cooking school, you have to wear your mask. Now, did you take any notes? Don't worry, no pop quiz today. Just another fabulous meal featuring the flavors of Haiti. And remember, you can get today's recipe along with special savings at Publix.com Flavors of Haiti. From the cooking school and plantation, Michelle, back to you. Thanks, Melinda. In two weeks, she'll file her final report on the Publix Haitian Heritage Month celebration. Now back to today's recipes. Let's move on. Have you ever had salmon tartare? You can use this recipe on either smoked, cured, or fresh salmon as we have here. Now I highly recommend a quick flash freeze of a lot of fish whenever you're gonna serve them raw. It's just a healthier way to work with it. So this fish also comes from Delaware Chicken Farm and Seafood Market. It is a beautiful fish. You can visit them at DelawareChicken.com and find out all about their beautiful store. I'll show you first how to cut the salmon for tartare. I would basically cut this filet into a smaller piece, but then you wanna cut it down and make it just a little bit thinner. So let's go ahead and cut it just a little bit thinner like so and one more time like so. You never want the tartare to be too small. Too small you'll basically kind of lose it with all the goodness that we're adding to the bowl. But also if it's too big it'll be a little bit more like poke which is another dish that we can do in another day uh, which is also delicious. So you cut that down in little strips and then you turn those strips sideways and then you go ahead and cut those into small little diced pieces of fish. So always when you're working with tartare and raw things, I keep everything as cold as possible. This bowl just came out of the fridge and let's put everything into this bowl 
that's sitting over ice, so then we can mix it and turn it into a delicious tartare. So what I have here are very finely diced shallots that have been cooked in a little bit of olive oil until they are just translucent. And let's put a little bit of those into that. And then the same thing with ginger. The ginger has been finely, finely minced and cooked in a little bit of oil as well. I love combining capers and salmon together. So let's go ahead and chop up some capers a little more finely because if they're too big or whole, I feel like they kind of take over the whole dish. So let's go ahead and add this to your salmon. Dijon mustard, I have a little bit of that, which normally goes into the traditional beef tartare, but it's also delicious in the salmon tartare, a very nice small amount. Fresh dill that I'll just finely chop up to go into this mix, and that goes in there. Finally, a little bit of cracked black pepper, a little bit of kosher salt, and let's go ahead and mix. I haven't forgot about the chives. I'm gonna add them in just a moment. So you'll wanna taste this as you're mixing it. Make sure that it is really the flavor that you're looking for. It looks just stunning, uh, all these things mixed up together. And I can see that it definitely has the flavor of a little bit more of a traditional tartare. The only difference is that this has a bit of ginger in there because I love the taste uh, of that fresh ginger that has been cooked in a little bit of oil to soften the flavor. So I'm gonna put that right next to some bread chips and I call them bread chips because they're basically just thinly sliced pieces of bread that have been tossed in olive oil, salt and pepper and toasted because I think that dipping a bread chip into this tartare or topping it would be delicious, but I'm not done. This is the first way you can serve it. And then if you wanna get just a little bit fancy, I'm gonna go ahead and take these chives and kind of chop them up into big one inch pieces. We've got a little creme fraiche, which is basically the fancier sour cream. And we're gonna just dot this with a little bit of creme fraiche. Then we're gonna put a few chives right over the top. And finally, a little bit of salmon roe for a garnish. So I'll put a little bit here, right, sitting right on top of the creme fraiche. A little like so. And this obviously went from a beautiful and classic salmon tartare to something luxurious and beautiful. Kind of beautiful before too. Come right back, I've got more beautiful carpaccios and tartars for you coming up. are. We're here at the wonderful J World in Coconut Creek, a great place for our kids. For more information about JA and what's going on here, go to jasouthflorida.org or call 954-979-7100. Now back to the food. All right, everyone, this is everybody's favorite. We're going to do a tuna tartare and we're going to do it the way I did it when I first opened my first restaurant, Mishi's. We're going to take the tuna and we're going to do the same thing that we did to the salmon, right? We're gonna just make these cuts a little bit thinner so that we can make very small dice pieces. And with the tuna, you can always cut things a little bit bigger because people really just adore tuna. So it's really up to you how you wanna cut it. But for this tartare that I'm making today, it does have tiny little pieces of pineapple in it. So I highly recommend you cutting the tuna just as small or smaller than the pineapple um, so that you can really feel it in your mouth and get that wonderful crisp of a pineapple. All right, so I am just gonna cut this down a little bit smaller, like so. All right, so let's put this gorgeous tuna, which also came from Delaware Chicken Farm and Seafood Market, all into, again, a bowl that is over a bowl of ice. Let's put this up here. So the next star of this plate, aside from the tuna, like I told you, is little tiny minced pieces of pineapple. Uh, if you can eat peanuts, delicious roasted salted peanuts go into this. 
ginger, not cooked, cut on a microplane. You know, the microplane that you grate Parmesan cheese? Well, we microplane ginger so that it's really fine and very, very soft and delicate. And so I would say maybe even just a half a teaspoon of that and some thinly sliced scallions. Now, the fun stuff. A little bit of olive oil, a little bit of chili oil. You can either make this or you can buy it at any Asian grocery. I think normally, normal supermarkets have it now because everybody loves chili oil. And of course, some good soy sauce. I always use low sodium and I try to always get a really good quality organic sometimes if I can. All right, so mix that up. Now, if you wanted to, I guess you could add a little bit of chopped cilantro. It would go with basil or mint as well, but we kind of just like it as it is. So you can serve it like this in a bowl, or you can get a little fancy and grab a ring mold, which a lot of us have to make all kinds of different things. Put this down in the plate and go ahead and spoon your tartare into the ring mold. Make sure you push down using the spoon, the back of the spoon. And there you have it. Maybe a little drizzle of olive oil around would be nice. Maybe another drizzle of chili oil, very lightly because this stuff can get a little bit spicy would be nice. And if you want some big Malden salt right on the top, and there you have it, a gorgeous tuna and pineapple tartare. Come right back, and I have my son's favorite dish in the whole world. Yep, believe it or not, coming right up. show all about tartars and carpaccio. So my last dish is my son's favorite dish and that is a beef carpaccio. You take a filet mignon, which thanks to Delaware Chicken Farm and Seafood Market, they have gorgeous filet mignons, and you roll it up uh, in plastic wrap as tight as you can. And we actually reshaped it just by pushing it into plastic wrap. It doesn't really matter how it's shaped. Uh, and then you stick it in the freezer for a good 20 minutes, but no more than that. You don't want it to actually freeze. You just want it to get hard and really cold. It's all about keeping things cold. Take a little parchment paper and just put a little bit of oil down because you don't want it to stick to the paper. Okay, so let's start there. Let's start this out right. So again, we are slicing. I'm gonna kind of ignore my first slice. That's for the cook. And then we're gonna make nice, thin, as thin as you can, slices down into the beef. And try to keep them as even as you can. And I would say about six to seven slices would be perfect for a good starter of beef carpaccio. All right, so obviously you have a little bit of plastic, right, on the beef, which is normal, and it's actually okay. It helps the knife glide a little bit better. So just pull it right out. The plastic pulls right off of it. And you make whatever shape you want to make this into. And it's a lot easier than anybody would ever think. All right, that forms in there. It kind of looks like a little flower. Then, of course, the top piece of parchment paper also has to have just a little bit of oil so this doesn't stick. So let's put this right on top of the beef like so. Then take a pounder of some type uh, and go ahead. Don't beat it too hard. We've already cut it really thin. And that's it. So you'll either want to keep this in your fridge until it's time to serve, or of course you can serve this immediately. So you peel back the top piece of parchment and you can either put a plate over it or you can flip it onto a plate, it's up to you. And go ahead and remove the paper. 
like so. Then you have this beautiful, beautiful beef carpaccio. You can just eat it the way it is, but let's fancify it just a little bit. So we've got fresh arugula. Let's mix a little bit of extra virgin oil on that, but let's also put it onto our beef. Let's squeeze a little fresh lemon into our arugula, but let's also put a little piece next to our beef so we can squeeze it on there. Let's put a little salt and pepper into our salad. And again, onto my carpaccio, and of course, some fancy sea salt that I always keep around. Some shards of Parmesan cheese right on the salad. Put it right in the center, and then more Parmesan all the way around the beef. We have gorgeous croutons here that have been cooked with olive oil that make the experience even better. And there you have it, beautiful beef, carpaccio, Zachary's way. So taste buds, I hope you've enjoyed my week off from cooking and that you'll try some of my recipes from today. I know some of what you may be a bit squeamish about the rawness of these dishes, but I also know that some of you will love them. So if you lovers can sway some of you squeamish, <laughs> That'll make me happy. Anyway, next week I'll be giving you some real cool recipes, gazpachos to be exact. I'll give you some of my favorite recipes for these wonderful, refreshing, flavorful summertime classics. That's next week here on Soflo Taste. Coming up next is Soflo Home Project. Joining me now is host, design expert Elena Capra. Hello, Elena. What are you doing today on Soflo Home Project? Hi, Michelle. Good morning. So a great way to liven up your home is with artwork, but sometimes you should think beyond the canvas. Coming up on Soflo Home Project, we explore the world of color at the new Romero Brito Palace. So all my taste buds, please be smart, be safe and be well, and I'll see you next week. Goodbye and good taste. in the raw.